Last time, we saw the arrival of future Turles. A foe far too powerful for Trunks to fight, and for Turles to fight too. Goku and Vegeta are able to hold him off, but not for long. While Turles is out of the fight right now, he's maybe found a way to finally get back into it. We'll be seeing all that and more in this part 7 of What If Turles Survived. Future Turles is loving all of this. He has so much power, and he's fighting gods now. Nothing affects him like normal mortals anymore. He barely qualifies as one. He's more than a mortal, more than a Saiyan. And he might not be an actual god, but he's pretty damn close. The power of the Tree of Might makes him this strong. It makes him brush off all their attacks like it's nothing. He can even survive in the vacuum of space. The stage that he's reached right now, it's an evolution no Saiyan nor any other mortal can achieve. Only him and him alone. Even his other counterpart, wherever he's from and whatever his origin is. Even he's held back by something. But as he mentions this to Goku and Vegeta, he looks back at the other version of Turles, the good one. He can sense a strange power emanating from him, a very familiar one in fact. Turles tells his future self that he's right. He can't unlock that power. Something was holding him back. He kind of knew this all along, but didn't really know how to work around it. The power that he got from the Fruit of the Tree of Might, it was in there. It was dormant. He did channel it through Mighty Saiyan somewhat, but not completely. This future version of himself, his evil nature allowed him to achieve this fully. With ease too. Plus, there's also the fact that he had a bunch of other fruits from the Tree of Might. But still, the present version of Turles has this reserve of power. And he's been going about it the wrong way this entire time. He's long accepted by now that he's not the same person he once was. By all accounts, he's a good person. Especially faced with his future self, he could see this very clearly. And everything Vegeta just told him, he's right. If Turles can't defeat himself here, what kind of Saiyan is he? He's not truly as mighty as he once thought. Nothing's been holding him back from unlocking this power. Nothing physically, nothing genetically. Although, mentally he was holding himself back, and he didn't even realize it. But seeing his future self, it gives him a realization. His future self has embraced that evil, made it a part of him. He's embraced who he is, and he fully accepts it, using that to harness his power. Turles simply has to do the same thing, embrace who he is now. Channel the willpower within him to be what he wants to be. The desire to evolve in this battle, the desire to defeat himself, that all plays into it too. Shockingly enough, it wasn't Goku that gave him this revelation, it was Vegeta, the person he used to hate. And that's exactly what helped tip the scales too. He thanks his future self, and thanks Vegeta. He's finally realized what to do here. The red aura around him expands a bit further, growing even more intense. All those reserves of power within him, they get pushed out, with a godly flair to it too. There's a pillar of red light, and slowly it compresses into a thin beam and then vanishes. All that's left behind is a crater where Turles was once standing. But Vegeta looks up chuckling to himself, with Goku then noticing it too. Trunks is right below Turles and can't believe what he's seeing. All three seem pretty shocked and happy about this, but then Vegeta looks over at the future Turles, getting even happier when he sees the expression on his face. Future Turles has an expression of fear. He can't believe what he's seeing. Turles floats above them, looking dramatically different. The scar that wraps around his arm going to his heart is glowing as Aura dissipates off of it. His hair has grown longer. He's grown in size as well. This is the evolution Turles has been looking for. This is what he calls the Pinnacle of Might, otherwise known as the legendary Mighty Saiyan. This is him fully harnessing his power. Essentially, it's the power of Super Saiyan, combined with the full potential of Evil Saiyan, harnessed by Turles and made to his own power, rather than an evil form like the future version of himself has. God Key also acts as a puzzle piece to this, fitting it all together, making this form a godly one as well. Future Turles is still very confused about all of this. He still doesn't realize that Trunks time traveled, and he wonders what that big-eared green guy has to do with this too. This catches their attention because they don't know who he's talking about. Piccolo? Goku says he should be dead here, right? Future Turles has no clue, but it doesn't matter thinking about that now. He's more so focused on what's right in front of him. Another version of himself that seems to be much stronger than he is too, with a completely different form. That look of fear on Future Turles' face, it slowly goes away, turning back into a smile. Who cares about fighting Kakarot right now? This is even better. Fighting himself, a different version of himself with more power. This is what he wanted to see all along. Without exchanging any words, the two mighty Saiyans launch toward each other and clash. Future Turles, the one embracing his evil side. The one who never came to Earth. The one who grew through the Tree of Might. Versus present Turles, the good one. The one who went to Earth. The one who became allies with all these people. The one who became friends with all these people. Even having a family now. Technically even being related to Vegeta in a sense. And sure, he does have the power of the Tree of Might coursing through his veins. But he didn't further unlock its power by eating more fruits. He did so by actually training through hard work, just like Goku did, something his future self could never understand. Turles tries to get a hang of his new power, even accidentally launching his future self into space. It looks like he doesn't know his strength right now, but he flies up into the atmosphere, testing out what his future self said. Strange, it does seem like he can survive out here. Future Turles asks how it feels. They both have the same thing running through their veins right now. That's what allows them to fight out here. That's what allows them to be so great right now. Those other stands on Earth, they'll never understand this. And it makes him wonder, why is Turles like this? Why is he not looking for more power through the Tree of Might? He can grow so much stronger if he just embraces that side of him. But Turles says his future self is completely wrong. 
that's not how he gained this power. The exact opposite, actually. Sure, it did allow him to grow strong, but imagine if that future Turles went down the same path, especially with the extra years he has, because they are in the future, after all. He can consume as many fruits from the Tree of Might as he wants. If he eats too many too quickly, of course that'll just kill him, but clearly this guy knows how to use the Tree of Might. It's him, after all. And he's pushing his limits as much as possible with it. Present Turles even considered growing a Tree of Might on Earth again, trying to cultivate one, but he gave up that dream a while ago. Because he's realized by now, he's not going to grow truly stronger like that. Sure, it can be used as a crutch to grow stronger. And, in a way, he's always using it like that because it's part of him now. But he doesn't consider it a crutch, or some sort of cheat code or whatever. Because while he does have the power of it in him, he's made it his own by now. He's continuing to grow, through hard work only. Outside of the Super Saiyan God ritual, every ounce of power he's gained since the Tree of Might, it's been through his own work. And without that, his future self is never going to grow the same way. The two battle out in space, but it becomes very clear very quickly. Present Turles is exactly right. Here, he claims victory charging key around his hand, piercing it right through his future self's chest. Right through the scar that Goku gave him before. He doesn't necessarily take joy in this. He loves the thrill of battle. But at the end of the day, he still is killing another version of himself. And it's a pity to see that he never turned out the same way as him. Turles is not only embracing his current self in this battle, but he's completely rejecting his past self. In a sense, killing that past version of him, that evil conqueror obsessed with power, physically and figuratively killing him. That's not who he is anymore. And while this battle was fun, Turles takes solace in the fact that he's finally found inner peace. That harmony between his mental and his physical strength, that's what allowed him to evolve here. And he thanks his future self for that. Future Turles weakly chuckles. How fitting. Dying to himself. Well done. He wouldn't have wanted to have it any other way. In a sense, it's like he didn't lose at all. It was fun, and he wouldn't have wanted to die to anyone else. Turles charges a blast to finish him off. His future self, his strength is magnificent. He'll never forget him for as long as he lives. He blasts future Turles, killing him powering down and descending back to the planet. It seems like the future is thankfully saved here. Trunks can't believe all that he's missed. Goku and Vegeta have become gods, and then Turles he's become, well, whatever this is. But now it seems like he has nothing to worry about at least. He thanks everyone for their help, and they thank him. It truly was a great experience, and Vegeta's glad to see what kind of warrior Trunks has become. Even though he couldn't defeat that opponent, he tells Trunks to never forget the fact that he actually trained for his power. That other Turles, as far as Vegeta's concerned, he's a fraud. And Turles agrees with this too and he's glad to have had this opportunity. They return to the present. So with Turles gone, Trunks' future is safe, right? Well, it should be. Although, there is one loose end. Zamasu is still around. Thankfully for Trunks, though, he's not in that timeline anymore. Now, during the fight with future Turles, Zamasu was watching over. He did come to Earth and covertly watched everybody. As much as he wants to destroy everything here, especially Trunks for time traveling, he can't do that just yet. Of course, Goku Black had told him about these threats, but now he gets to see them firsthand. He never got to see them firsthand because this is the Zamasu from Trunks' timeline. He never saw Goku and Vegeta in Super Saiyan Blue, he never saw Turles with the Mighty Saiyan form or as the pinnacle of might, and he didn't even consider the fact that Trunks would just travel to the past again to get some help. Plus, now without Goku Black, he's lost his muscle. But still, he's immortal. Should he continue this plan, or should he try something else? Maybe it's not too late to go back. But if anything, seeing this all disgusted him even further, it invigorates him, and makes him want to do this even more. But clearly, Goku Black was a weak link. He doesn't need that. But Goku Black was good for one thing. He gave Zamasu a really good idea. After watching this battle, Zamasu uses the time ring to go to the present. Wasting no time, he goes to Universe 10, the sacred world of Kai. He kills Gowasu, then staring his present self in the eye. Of course, present Zamasu's completely taken aback. This Zamasu hasn't even met Goku yet, and he is hesitant after all. But then again, He's no different from the future version of himself. This is what future Zamasu saw when Goku Black killed Goasu in his timeline. But to make things even better here, Zamasu is just seeing himself doing it. Essentially, he's pulling what Goku Black did to him, trying to draw another Zamasu into his plan. And given the fact that he is still Zamasu, it works. Probably easier than it was for Goku Black. Especially because this Zamasu, he did watch the Universe X tournament on GodTube. He saw what Goku was doing, what Hit was doing controlling time. Together, these two Zamasus will stop these mortals from acting like that. And with the time ring, it won't be a big deal. Of course, the other gods' destruction will be an issue, but future Zamasu does have a way around. He didn't do this immediately without thinking. If they go to get the Super Dragon Balls now, in this timeline at least, it's going to be tough because first of all, they haven't restored yet. It hasn't been a full year since they were using the Universe 6 tournament because this arc did happen a little bit earlier. But who cares? They have time rings. And with the god of destruction dying here, they're going to have to work quick because this timeline might be on high alert. But future Zamasu knew that he'd have to come to this timeline regardless eventually whether before destroying Trunks' timeline or after. But they have an immaculate idea, one that lets them be Zamasu, but still powerful. 
they get another set of Super Dragon Balls, wishing for the second Zamasu to be immortal. But that's not it. No, this just makes both of them immortal, but what's the use in being immortal if they're not going to have the power behind it? And they could steal someone else's body, but clearly that didn't work for Goku Black. Also, why take a mortal's body when they could have their own godly body? And there's a really simple way to do this, and they don't even need a wish for it. Future Zamasu simply takes off one of his earrings, giving it to the other Zamasu who puts it on. This way they work in complete harmony. They'll be immortal, unlike if he were to do this with Goku Black. But still, he's going to be much stronger than before. Sure, not as strong as he would be if he fused with Goku Black, but... What better person to fuse with than yourself? It's still a highly compatible fusion. And the two of them merge into an immortal fused Zamasu. Realistically, the Zamasu would look different. But I love this design, and it's easier to go with this, so we'll stick with it. The fusion of future Zamasu and past Zamasu, both immortal. Now part of a truly divine fusion, one that is also immortal. And not partially, fully immortal, because both of its parts were immortal. And while the gods of destruction could be an issue, with this type of power and speed, he has a really good idea of what to do here. Zamasu makes quick work, teleporting around the different universes. He's striking as quickly as possible, one by one, the Kais and all of the universes fall. Thankfully, it seems like Zeno hasn't noticed yet, or doesn't care for some reason. Zamasu isn't too sure, and he knows he's not going to do anything against Zeno. At least, not like this. If Zeno does end up erasing everything, then so be it. But right now, Zamasu's able to do whatever he wants. All the Kais die, and all the gods of destruction die with them, with the angels also going dormant. And Zamasu goes for his first target, Universe 7. This all happens within minutes, maybe even just seconds. It's such a well-calculated and executed plan. He's able to do this seamlessly. Now, he doesn't know what other strong mortals are out there, but he knows in Universe 7, there's some particularly interesting ones. So, he simply goes to Earth first, and without hesitation, launches a blast that pierces right through its core. On Earth, everyone looks up and sees a pillar of light, but before anyone can even act, it's already too late. The planet collapses in on itself. Unluckily for everybody, no one was on Beerus' planet at the time. They don't even realize that Beerus has been killed too. And because of that, no one on Earth survives. It's completely decimated. Even though there's multiple people here who can survive a blast like that, they can't survive the vacuum of space. But Zamasu did forget one key thing. He did realize that they'd all die out in space, but he didn't get to see the full fight between the two versions of Turles. He didn't realize that they could actually live out in space. Seeing Earth destroyed, he moves on to the rest of Universe 7, trying to look around for any other strong mortals. But in the debris field left behind by Earth's explosion, someone floats there. It's Turles. He's actually pretty unscathed from all this. A planet exploding won't really do much to him. It's so strange, even in base he's able to survive out in space. Did that really just happen? It feels like a nightmare of sorts, but no, this is reality. He flies away from Earth, or at least where it once was, and just sees nothing left behind but dust. Everyone's gone. This is real, and it's all setting in. No one was even on Beerus' planet at the time, so not even they would have been spared. Now that he thinks about it, where is Beerus, and Whis for that matter? They were probably even on Earth at the time enjoying the food here, but why would they not be out in space too? They could have survived that. And then it slowly starts to hit Turles even more. All of his friends, all of his allies, tights, everybody. It all starts rushing in. He realizes that they're gone for good. Even Earth's Dragon Balls are gone too. Who in the hell did this? Actually, maybe he can go to Namek. That's his last hope here. It's not completely set in stone. He could bring everyone back. He just needs to get to Namek somehow. Bring Earth back and the set of Dragon Balls in Earth too. He doesn't even realize that Namek's Dragon Balls have been upgraded. And they could just revive everyone themselves. He needs to get there quickly because whatever's happening, it's probably going to target Namek too. He senses a power nearby though. And he hears a voice talking to him telepathically. It seems he didn't actually kill everybody here. Looks like he was a little too hasty with destroying Earth. He completely forgot. This guy could survive out in space. He remembered that the future counterpart of Turles could, but not this one too. It slipped his mind. Floating there where Earth once was, he sees Fuse Zamasu. Wait, a green guy with big ears. Is that the guy that future Turles was talking about? Who is he? And was he responsible for this? And Zamasu thinks to himself, maybe he will need a little bit more power for this. He'll have to find another way to defeat this guy. This is where we'll leave off for now. What'd you guys think about this part? And what's going to happen next time? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.